name is Chris Cosentino. I am the chef owner of Coxcomb Restaurant in San Francisco, Acacia House in Napa Valley, and Jackrabbit in Portland. Eating meat is a very important part of what I do. I do use the whole animal. I wrote a book called Oful Good. I felt that it was really important to really embrace and give respect for an animal's life by using all of it. Sustainable eating embodies many, many things. Not only how you choose to purchase your products, who you purchase them from, but also how they were handled. And that to me is one of the most important steps in choosing meat. So the reason I came here to uh, C2 Ranch in Medford, Oregon, is to check out this piece of technology called Herd Dog. It's such a cool piece of technology that it can actually take temperature, tell if the animal's acting erratically, if it's been drinking water, if it's missing from the rest of the herd, and it's all gonna show up on a phone. I'm really excited to meet Melissa and just go through the Herd Dog process. Her dog is something like the Fitbit for cows. The tag is attached to the animal's ear, and from there you're collecting biometric data. The data actually can generate uh, answers more quickly than if a producer was out in the field. My name's Sean Jones. I'm the manager of C2 Cattle Company. My job is being a good steward of the land and the animals. Melissa's herd dog technology helps us monitor the cattle more efficiently and know when they're getting sick Healthier, happier cows make healthier, happier people. Her dog is helping to eliminate some of the challenges that producers face. The primary way of detecting ill animals is visual detection. The animals are trying to, by nature, hide their illness, so the likelihood of detecting illness early is very slim. So once the data is collected to the phone, it gets pushed directly to the cloud. So then we create individual animal profiles for all of these girls. If you're trying to identify a particular animal within the herd, um, their LED will turn on. See like her, she's yep. got her tag lit up. You're a doctor in the sky without poking, prodding, exactly. no temperature no, gauges, no, temperature no needles, gauges. nothing. The truth is the herd dog technology is very exciting and it looks like it's something we'll really be able to implement. When you're providing too many antibiotics for an animal, you're helping to create uh, superbugs. I don't wake up every morning and pop an antibiotic pill because it's not good for me. It's not good for anything. So why would we do that to the animals? But also, it ends up in the groundwater. It ends up in the soil because the animals pass it through their system. When you have a situation where animals are sustainably raised, you're omitting a lot of these problems. We neglect to understand that the old way was the right way. So this is the dashboard of some of the animals that we tag. And I noticed something I wanted to show you with number 208. In this particular case, I think she's she's got a raised temperature. You think we ought to go take a look at her in the pasture? Yeah, let's do that. All right. All right. This technology is giving the best treatment without overly impacting the animals. Her dog was able to identify an animal that needed some help. And so we were able to come out here today and check that animal with our own eyes and then sort that animal off. Basically all things need to be treated properly. Whether you're a human or a cattle, whether you're going to eat them or not, they still deserve respect. This is epic. It's I mean, you've got cool. a swim hole. Swimming hole, beautiful grill. This is just a sweet spot on the ranch, yeah. So Chris serves us up this comparison between a regular steak from the grocery store and a grass-fed, pasture-raised steak. That is not yours. No. Okay, so that is. That is. Everybody knows fat equals flavor. And let's see which one the, the wasp likes. See, nature just proved itself right there. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Isn't that crazy? I could not believe the difference between those two pieces of meat. Grass-fed, not grass-fed. This is grass-fed meat right here. Vibrant red, okay, really rich. And then you've got this here as non-grass-fed. It almost looks like pork. So we have non-grass-fed. Okay. Pretty bland. There's nothing there. There's nothing hanging on on your palate. Mm. It's, it seems pretty mute to me. Kind of greasy. First grass-fed. Ladies you. first. 
Oh, that's so much better, it isn't even funny. It is, absolutely. That is incredible. The proof is in the pudding, and it comes out when you taste the difference in the product. And happy animals make happy food. Happy chefs make happy food. From what I've seen today, I think that her dog is really gonna give a huge advantage to the rancher to guarantee the safety of his herd. I think what they're doing is just amazing. You have Sean, who's raising beautiful grass-fed animals. You have her dog that's providing data that helps Sean do a better job of monitoring the animal well-being. And you have Chris, who's then distributing that amazing product to the consumer. I, I think as a trio, we're really solving a problem that everybody should be interested in. Chefs need to lead by example, and what I'm really excited about is Panera, who is one of the big guys, is leading by example. So they buy and demand better quality, sustainable, grass-fed, you're using clean animals. There's the win, because they can lead by example for everybody else. Super Cake